What is up my fellow queers, allies, history enthusiasts, or people who just like my channel? Today we are going to be discussing Stonewall, Breaking Out in the Fight for Gay Rights by Anne Bossom. Also, brief note, if throughout the video you can hear any like snoring or noises, I do have my dog right here asleep next to me. She did not want to move so I could film this video, so she's just a little old lady sleeping in the background. <laughs> The book is a well-researched but brief chronicle of the history of gay rights in America with a particular emphasis on the 1969 Stonewall Riots. The book gives historical background to the era and the stance of the queer community at the time being generally unaccepted and criminalized in certain aspects and the experience of West Village gays, both good and bad, some living in the closet and some attempting to live openly but in scorn. The book also briefly chronicles some activism predating the riots, so it doesn't erase the fact that like there was activism predating it, but not anything of particular note. It describes the Stonewall Inn and its patrons being a mafia-run bar that's definitely not the most reputable of joints, but it does allow queer attendees and same-sex dancing, so it was generally embraced by the gay community. The Stonewall, which for clarification, it is called the Stonewall Inn, but it was a bar or at least operating under a bottle club because there were different legal guidelines and things. They were they were flying under it. It was shady shit. They were trying to like get around like legal loopholes and stuff, which is very much kind of the theme of the time. <laughs> the Stonewall became a target of raids due to the alleged blackmailing schemes that involved some of its patrons. Having already raided the bar earlier in the week on the evening of July 27th and more specifically the early morning hours of July 28th, 1969, the police raided the Stonewall again, this time to a much different result. The police performed the raid, rounding up employees of the bar as well as cross-dressing individuals who were technically breaking laws of the time, there being laws in place requiring individuals to be wearing three specific gendered items of clothing at any given time. Which, what the fuck? <laughs> First of all, what a bizarre law to have at all, but I digress, this was the 1960s. And then one by one, the other patrons of the bar were allowed to leave. But instead of dispersing like they typically would have in a raid at this point in time, the crowd decided to kind of stay and wait up for other people being released from the bar. And then other pedestrians and patrons who were surrounding the bar kind of decided to check things out and the crowd began to grow. When the police started officially performing arrests, some of the individuals were trying to resist and there are conflicting reports as to the exact identity and gender of the individual, but it's generally accepted that a possible lesbian called out to the crowd, why don't you guys do something, as they were fighting their own arrest. And so the crowd did. Coins were thrown at cops, followed by glass bottles, followed by bricks that were found at a nearby construction site, until the police force was eventually forced to retreat into the stone wall and barricade themselves inside. And of course, because the police were invading their space, this only further anchored the crowd, which had grown to over 2,000. The unrest escalated, forcing the cops to stay barricaded inside the stone wall for nearly an hour until reinforcements arrived, but not even the riot response force was able to break this crowd, and it wasn't until hours later that the chaos finally died down and the crowd dispersed of their own accord. Ultimately, the riot was a success, resulting in no deaths and no major reported injuries. Well, the raid was not. They barely arrested about a dozen individuals and they only got a couple like bottles of liquor. They just did not get the evidence that they were searching for, especially when considered with the chaos that it took and caused and ensued. The biggest casualty of the night was the Stonewall Inn itself, which faced extensive interior damage. 
mostly at the hands of the police. There was a little bit of outside damage that was caused by the riot itself, but it was really the police intentionally trying to destroy the bar that was the biggest casualty of the night. Despite the damage, the Stonewall Inn opened that very evening, minus the serving of alcohol, and for possibly the first time, the queer community felt like just that, a united front of similar experiences and backgrounds as opposed to isolated individuals. The evening following the early morning riot resulted in some more riotous chaos, but nothing compared to the June 28th riot, and not nearly as chronicled in the book. Like, the book is very small and the real meat and potatoes of it is specifically the June 28th early morning riot, which is really like what you think of when you think of Stonewall, not the following evening that was still chaotic and slightly riotous, or the following week where there was another riot at the Village Voices news offices in response to the news coverage of the event, which took on a very condescending and homophobic tone. The book notes how following the riot, new advocacy groups started to crop up, pride parades were hosted every year in commemoration of the Stonewall riot, and progress was really starting to be made within the queer community until the 1970s and the onslaught of the epidemic of AIDS, which really plagued the queer community in particular and unfortunately added a lot of fuel to the homophobic fire until the early 2000s and 2010s where we started seeing some modern rights wins, including marriage equality. Throughout the book, the individual Craig Rodwell was used as kind of a connecting tie throughout, you know, tying pre-Stonewall activism to the riot itself and post-riot activism. I'm not exactly sure why he was chosen to be like the golden child of the gay rights movement, but he is definitely mentioned throughout the book and it's like utilized enough to notice, but not necessarily so much that like you feel like the entire book is about him because it's not. Um, he is just the one common name that you see kind of throughout the book that ties it all together. The tone of the book is definitely geared towards a younger audience. It is marketed as being for teens, but I would go so far as to say it'd probably be best for middle schoolers, but it is a really good introductory resource into the history of gay rights and is a really good kind of jumping off point to decide what you might want to research further or if nothing else, if you don't know anything about the history and the movement, this is a really good like comprehensive minor snapshot of it. However, the book does specifically center and mostly refer to gays, whereas it doesn't so much involve the queer community as a whole, which as we know involves so many individuals. There's an entire spectrum of people that the community applies to, but the book very much does center white cisgender gay males. There are mentions of lesbians and the book does note the sexism that was found within even the gay community, but the shining star of the book is definitely the gay white man. The book does acknowledge that the gay rights movement was very heavily influenced by the Black Civil Rights Movement that was happening around the same time. Although the book does exclusively refer to Black individuals as African Americans, which I have never understood because like arguably that's still kind of racist because like not all Black individuals are African Americans. There are so many different cultures and countries that Black individuals come from. I think it's like kind of a little racist to use African American as like the PC term for it. But I do find it funny that like it does acknowledge that the gay rights movement was very influenced by the black civil rights movement while also presenting the book in a very whitewashed lens and very much does not acknowledge people of color within the queer community. I'm not sure how intentional that was, if it was like a decision made on the author's part or if there just aren't a ton of resources in regards to people of color within the movement because historically things have been very racist and whitewashed, so. The language used within the book is very careful to describe how unaccepted and criminalized queer behavior was while 
being very careful not to condone or agree with those sentiments and like a lot of times the language does feel very orchestrated in that sense but I do think I'd prefer it feeling a little bit orchestrated to like not being sure which side the author stands on or having any doubt that the author was homophobic themselves. Um, it does just lead the book feeling a little bit stiff at times. The book also very heavily follows the point of view of the police during the raid and very little of it chronicles the perspectives of the crowd and I definitely would have liked to have seen it been a little bit more even. Like I definitely understand from a historical standpoint there's going to be a little bit more detail from the police because they would have had to have done paperwork and made reports and things like that but I would have loved to have felt a little bit more of the crowd point of view as well versus specifically following the police. I do wish that they had been a little bit more thorough and accurate with their description and explanation of the AIDS epidemic because the way it's framed in the book they make it sound like it like started off as a gay problem and then eventually like moved on to the rest of the world when that is definitely not at all the case. Well it is true that AIDS was definitely more common within the queer male community. It was because queer men are more likely to engage in sexual acts that transfer the disease but it is not at all like exclusive to any one particular people and it's honestly like very bizarre to think that that was something that was just like so accepted like with our modern like medical knowledge the fact that like it like people just thought like oh it was a gay thing like people genuinely thought it was like a god-driven plague to like get rid of queer individuals when it's just a medical condition that is able to be contracted through blood and bodily fluids. I do definitely think that the book could have been longer because it is like very short but even being like a brief history there are definitely a lot of times throughout the book where like an idea is kind of introduced and then very quickly tapers off without feeling like a finished thought or like something will be brought up for like a single sentence or a brief paragraph and then very quickly move on when it's like we should have devoted a few paragraphs to that like if like either if you're gonna bring it up bring it up or don't but like the half finished thoughts were definitely kind of annoying not necessarily in a way that like super negatively affected the reading experience. I just wish that it had been a little bit more expansive and elaborated on. And like, while I obviously understand that there is not a lot of documentation of queer history because of circumstance and homophobia throughout the years, there's definitely room for more expansion. <laughs> I also of course wish that it had had more of an accurate representation of diversity within the community because there were so many individuals who were people of color or people of varying gender identities that were featured within the movement that don't get their light of day in this book. There are also definitely a, like points out the book like some of the language throughout the book feels a little bit outdated but not like intentionally or in a homophobic or transphobic way. It is kind of hard to just assign language that didn't exist at the time to an event from the future, if that makes sense. Like we have a lot of modern language now that did not exist at the time of the riots, so you don't want to assign modern language to past individuals who cannot agree with or disagree with that language being used towards them. But as a result, a lot of the language that's used throughout the book definitely feels a little bit outdated. I also think it is interesting that the book was written by a straight female individual, but the author actually does acknowledge at a note at the end of the book that she very heavily questioned, you know, whether or not she was the person to write this book and she didn't think she was until she was actually requested by readers to write the book. So overall I do absolutely think it is a fantastic resource especially for a younger audience as long as the reader is aware that this is not the be all end all of the movement and that there were many individuals and groups of people who were involved that definitely deserve a little bit more recognition that they got in this particular instance. 
But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching and happy pride.